Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday, last Sunday in July. Hear these words from scripture. We are children of God learning to walk. Day by day, we are learning to be the church, and God is a loving parent teaching us to walk. Let us worship the God who loves us, leads us, and feeds us.
This is a song called You Are My All in All, and it's kind of got two parts. Uh, so toward the end, Nancy will re-sing the first part, and I'll do the second part on top of her, and uh, we hope it all works out. You are my strength when I am weak. For my all in all. When I fall down, you take me on. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship using the words found in your bulletin from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Then we cried to the Lord in our trouble, and God delivered us from our distress. Let us thank the Lord for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind. Now let's sing together the opening hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, number 643 in the hymnal.
we could be revived by God's grace, we find ourselves fearing God's judgment, doubting God's joy in us, fearing God has turned away from us. Let us come to the one who heals and calls each of us by name. Please join me in the prayer for forgiveness, which is printed in your bulletin. Lord God, we sometimes wonder why our lives take the paths they do. We seem to find ourselves in all sorts of situations we have never envisioned, and we wonder what you are doing with us. Keep close to us, we pray, and give us the faith to trust you for whatever happens. Then, in your providence, show us more of your glory and grace so that we may be encouraged and praise you forever. Hear these words from our God. I cannot give up on you. My compassion grows warm and tender. When my children come trembling, I will bring them home. Friends, believe the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. How was your first week of school? Good. We like our teachers. We're feeling, feeling positive about it. Direction it's going. Um, this morning, our scripture lesson is from the book of Colossians. It's a letter written to a group of Christians a long, long time ago. Um, and there's a list of things that we're not supposed to do as Christians. Um, and it's a pretty long list. Um, and there are some things in there that are kind of relatable to some of us in here, things that we might be tempted to do, like lie to other people. But there's also things that I think if y'all read it, you would wonder, when would I ever do this at school or at my house? Um, And so I thought y'all could maybe help me come up with um, figuring out a list I have, of figuring out um, what are things people who follow Jesus do, and what are things who people follow Jesus don't do. So, Can we take a quick break from the building blocks? Thank you. I promise you can play afterwards. And this is kind of play. Okay, so this blue cup are things that we do as people who love Jesus. And the yellow cup is things that we don't do. And if you can think of other things that I don't name that we should do, we can also add that. So we're going to pretend these erasers, these old school erasers, are are things that we can or can't do. Um, And so I'm going to name something, and you tell me which cup it goes in. So this is things that we do and things that we shouldn't do. So here's maybe an easy one. Telling the truth. Which cup? Do you want to put it in? Okay, is this the do cup? Okay, we'll make that the do cup. Sounds good. All right, what about um, you're in the classroom, and somebody has the book that you really want to read, and so you get upset with them, and you're jealous Which cup does that go into? This is the what you do and what you don't do. Haha, don't do. You think that's right? Your brother's right? Good. I think so too. Um, What about you're taking a spelling test or a math test 
and the person next to you um, studied a little harder and knows the answers a little more, and so you peek over um, and, and steal their answer, copy their answer. Do you want to do it? Aha, uh -huh, the don't cup, yes. I think we have lots of teachers in here who would agree. Um, what about if your brother, both of you have a brother, yeah. Um, what if your brother, what's something not nice you might do to each other? Um, do you guys share a bathroom? Yeah. Do you ever fight in the morning over like who gets to brush their teeth or use the bathroom? You don't ever fight over the bathroom? Not yet, maybe you will in the future. And if you're frustrated with your brother, you might feel tempted to call him a mean name or say something not nice to him. Which cup would that go into? Thank you, got it, good job. All right, do y'all, can y'all think of anything else we should do that's positive? Yes, nice things, not mean things. Don't slap. Don't slap, yes, not hurting each other. We as Christians and as good people do not hurt one another. Anything else? What, did you witness anything at school? Did you do anything nice or see anybody do something nice at school this week? Or did your teacher do anything nice for you? Did they give you, what? I'm sure they did. Maybe um, they, ta I mean, even teaching you the rules to the classroom is kind of a nice thing, so you know it's expected. <laughs> Sometimes that's nice. We'll put that in the nice cup. This is a nice cup, yes. So the point is, is that the letter to the Colossians has lots of things that we should and shouldn't do, um, but we know that the list goes even further than that. Um, and it's not all, is it always easy to do these things correctly? No. No. And is it pretty tempting to do the bad things sometimes? I think I do a bad thing every single day in some manner, and I'm sure y'all can relate, of making a mistake and feeling sorry for it, and so we ask God to help us. So let us pray to God and ask. Will y'all repeat after me in this prayer? Okay, in the congregation, you can help us pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for teaching us what to do, thank you for teaching us what to do, and what not to do. And what not to do. Help us remember these lessons. Help us remember these lessons. Amen. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Our hymn of gathering number 65. <laughs> guide me, uh, guide me, yeah. Oh, thou great Jehovah. <laughs>
as we approach God's word, let us pray for the spirit to illumine our hearts and our minds. O oh God, we thank you for your word given to us in the written words of scripture and for your living word, Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, open us to receive your word and to be transformed by it. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Hosea, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the further they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals, and they burned incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with bands of human kindness, with cords of love. I treated them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They will return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria will be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword will strike wildly in their cities. It will consume the bars of their gates, and it will take everything because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me, and though they cry out to the Most High, he will not raise them up. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart winces within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I won't act on the heat of my anger. I won't return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not a human being, the Holy One in your midst. I won't come in harsh judgment. They will walk after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like a bird and like a dove from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. When I was teaching uh, at the university, Warren Housley and Roberta Martin and I frequently went to uh, different national con uh, conferences, and there was a division that dealt with spiritual and ethical issues. Uh, it started out as a Roman Catholic support group, and then it became non-denominational and, and opened up. So anyhow, we went to a Catholic mass at a meeting in Chicago, and I heard this beautiful folk song that I, I liked a lot and so I asked the person if I could have a copy and they gave it to me. Trinity Choir has sung this a long time ago but it's called Weave Weave and it is uh, about the fact that all of us uh, come from different backgrounds but we all work together for the common good and uh, when we get to the end you will have heard the chorus enough that you ought to be able to sing it with us. So the last time we do the chorus, uh, please join in. And we start with the chorus, and you'll hear it three times, and then the fourth time, join, join in. We, we, we must
Our second reading this morning comes from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Listen again to the word of God. Therefore, if you were raised with Christ, look for the things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right side. Think about the things above and not things on earth. You died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. So put to death the parts of your life that belong to the earth, such as sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. The wrath of God is coming upon disobedient people because of these things. You used to live in this way when you were alive to these things, but now set aside these things, such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all things and in all people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jamila Jamil a British actor who is probably best known for her role in The Good Place, playing Tahani in the sitcom, hosts a podcast called I Weigh, W-E-I-G-H. In each episode, she has conversations, primarily with celebrities and activists, about their mental health. The concept for the podcast began when Jamil was fed up with a slew of Instagram ads that targeted young users with non-FDA approved diet and detox products. And Jamil used the hashtag iWeigh, W-E-I-G-H, to encourage people and women in particular to weigh aspects of their personality rather than their physical weight while simultaneously pushing the Instagram platform to change their policies regarding targeted ads and minor protections. Jamil's first post on Instagram for the movement included this list of things that she weighs herself. I weigh, Jamil writes, I weigh a lovely relationship and great friends. I laugh every day. I love my job. 
I make an honest living. I'm financially independent. I speak out for women's rights. I like my bingo wings, which is a new to me term for the skin and fat that hangs from the bottom of one's upper arms when they are raised and they shout bingo. <laughs> and she rounds off her list with, I like myself in spite of everything I've been taught by the media to hate about myself. After each conversation on the podcast, during a time when usually the host might ask what the guest's upcoming movie or album is, or where listeners can follow them on social media, Jamil instead closes by asking, Reese Witherspoon, what do you weigh? Ibram X. Kendi, what do you weigh? Giving the celebrity guest time to name a few things other than their physical weight that they weigh, the personality traits and passions that contribute to who they are as a person. For one more example of the concept, here's what Gloria Steinman's answer was to the question. I weigh my love of my age unexpectedly. I did not expect to love being old, but it's great fun. It's sort of almost as fun as being a child. I weigh my house. I weigh having a nest, a nest that I love to live in and that I can invite friends to stay in and have meetings in. And I weigh not having a job because I don't have a schedule. I weigh my friends, my chosen family. I love them and I could not get along without them. Jamil also ends many of the episodes with voicemails from ordinary listeners like us presenting what they weigh. So it's not just folks with more accolades and money than the average listener speaking from these points of privilege, emphasizing their success and their comfort in life. Both guests and listeners of the podcast are invited to rethink their identities. There are toxic, subliminal, and explicit emphases on one's worth being directly tied to the shape or strength of one's body, and it often takes active awareness to begin to reject this emphasis. The idea behind I Way helps people resist associating their worth, the weight of their impact on society, with a single number or factor. The writer of Colossians tells the church, take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the one who created it. Another translation reads, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and you have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge to the image of its creator. You have stripped off the old self and clothed yourselves with the new self. In our baptisms and our identity in Christ, we have changed into a new outfit, into new clothes. In the early church, confirmands and those being baptized had a quite literal practice of stripping off the clothes of the old human nature, the clothes of the old self, and putting on the clothes of the new self, the new human nature. Likely partially influenced by the Jewish ritual that continues today for some communities, the ritual of bathing in the mikveh, a bath used for the purpose of ritual immersion, in Judaism to achieve ritual purity. We have records from the third and fourth century of those to be baptized, disrobing, and being anointed with, with oil, renouncing the devil and evil, confessing their faith in the Trinity, and then being immersed in the font. And after that, they were anointed once more, receiving the laying on of hands and clothed in new white clothes. They were literally taking off their old clothes and receiving new ones upon their immersion into the community of faith. Today, although many who are baptized, babies included, will come wearing bright white dresses or robes with lacy details and embroidery, 
we don't typically maintain this literal distinction between the clothes of the old self and the clothes of the new self. But what does that but does that mean that this text then means nothing for us? What does it mean for us to have new clothes to put on, clothes of a new creation? It means that we have stripped away the values which are mentioned earlier in the text, those that belong to the earth. Sexual immorality and moral corruption, lust, evil desire, and greed, all forms of idolatry. And we set aside things of the earth like anger and rage and malice and slander and obscene language. These, among others, as this is not meant to be an exhaustive list, are the values that we no longer clothe ourselves with. The point is, salvation in Christ is not just of a spiritual nature. It does not only have implications for what we might believe happens when we die or who we worship each Sunday morning. Our salvation has physical, material implications for ourselves today. We are called to remember the new nature into which we were immersed or sprinkled or wrapped into and live like a people who wear a uniform that signals social values of respect and inclusivity, of loving a God whose law and love reigns above all earthly government and leaders, values of honesty, of justice, and of humility. And there's a lot of pressure and responsibility in wearing these metaphorical clothes. I wonder if it would be helpful for us to give a nod toward Jamila Jamil's approach of I way and ask ourselves, what do I wear? Because just as the podcast's guests benefit from vocalizing what they value most and how they are able to positively contribute to society, we could benefit from regular opportunities to assert and remind ourselves of the new nature, of the new way of doing life, the clothes which Christ tailors for us. What do I wear? I wear sharing God's love through ordinary acts. I wear listening to the voices of those in marginalized communities, listening to the voices of those who experience the world in a different way than I do. I wear a vision for a community where diversity is celebrated while unity and togetherness is continually sought out. After Gloria Steinman's answer, about what she weighs on the podcast, Jamil, the host, offers, I'm going to say for you, you weigh an extraordinary contribution to women over decades, and your work has moved me so much and helped me and soothed me whenever I felt I couldn't carry on. As Jamil offered a reminder to her about her weight in relation to others around her, I wonder if that's also part of our calling as a community of believers, to not just ask ourselves what we wear, but to remind one another about the metaphorical clothing that we put on, holding one another accountable and offering an encouraging word when we forget our uniform, reminding one another of the compassion of which we are called and the dreams that we seek. The Instagram ads and Facebook ads will work hard to convince us that our worth is held only in a unit of pounds, but we will work hard to remind ourselves that our worth is tied not to that number, but to what really drives us to be good citizens. Our worth is tied to God's love for us. And the world will work hard to convince us that our clothes are those of idolatry and deceitfulness, but we will work hard to answer the question, what do we wear? All glory be to the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we together affirm our faith 
using the words printed in your bulletin from the Confession of 1967. God has created human beings for a personal relation with God, that they may respond to the love of the Creator. God has created and endowed humans with capacities to make the world serve their needs and to enjoy its good things. Life is a gift to be received with gratitude and a task to be pursued with courage. People are free to seek life within the purpose of God, to develop and protect the resources of nature for the common welfare, to work for justice and peace in society, and in other ways to use their creative power for the fulfillment of human life. newsletter of, of current and ongoing um, prayer concerns. Um, Joan Milroy's sister early last week was transitioned to hospice care and she passed away um, on Tuesday, I believe, um, after a 10 plus year battle with cancer. And so I believe Joan is returning today, but she was able to be in New Jersey with her sister um, during that transition. Um, we also pray for, we have a few folks who are, are having COVID right now and um, COVID-related issues. Um, we have Sandra Price and the parishes, um, and I got a text from Don Jackson that his family has been exposed um, this morning. And so we pray for all of these people, um, and we pray for no further complications beyond the usual, um, and continued healing for George Bueller and... Um, uh, we pray for a uh, as routine surgery for Faye Fisher as possible this week. Is there anybody else to add to our prayer list? Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, we are much in need of your guidance. When we wobble and fall, Stand us up and help us walk again with cords of human kindness and bands of love. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for the church and for all who teach others with kindness and firm guidance and love. God, you are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for peace among nations and peace between people. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for those suffering the scourge of war and the calamities of nature. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for all those in need especially women and children who suffer domestic violence and homelessness. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for those who are ill and their families and their caregivers. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. We pray for those who refuse to give who have more than enough, but choose to build new barns in which to hoard instead of help. You are to us like those who lift their infants to their cheeks. Loving God, through Jesus Christ, you nurture and nourish us. 
You love us with a steadfast love, low and high, rich and poor together. Renew in us your call and release us from all fear that we may heed these things and consider your steadfast love for all people. You are like those who lift their infants to their cheeks, God. And we pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We share from our abundance, so that we might be rich toward God. Let us offer our gifts and our worship. our gifts, O Lord, and use them to bring good news to those in need of hope and renewal. Amen. Now let us sing our hymn of response number 716, God whose giving knows no ending.
can, and if you have an announcement for the congregation, I invite you to come forward to the microphone. Um, this is your last day to submit a request for a hymn that you would like us to sing on August 21st. You can email that to me. You can Instagram message it to me. You can do whatever you want. And there are, <laughs> and there are, um, there's a basket in the back by Courtney with orange paper. You can also just do it old school and write it down and put it in the basket. But don't leave before you do that. Um, Linda Miller, our administrative assistant, is going on a well-deserved vacation this week. Um, and so we have two volunteers, Lucy Landrum and Patricia McCarthy will help um, me keep the office together. Um, we'll have abbreviated hours from 9 to 12 um, are the hours that it'll be officially open, but you might find me afterwards, but just stick to those hours to keep it easy. Um, and one more thing, um, on Wednesday night, I put this in the newsletter, a Zoom call will be hosted um, by an astronomer and three of my seminary professors, an ethics professor, a theology professor, and an Old Testament professor to talk about the James Webb telescope images and what that means for us. Um, and that link is in your email. If you can't find it, let me know. Um, but I'm excited for it. Good morning. Um, I weigh this uh, coffee stain right here on my blazer or whatever this is. And the reason I weigh that is because my mom taught me to do that. And so in honor of that, what we might call mistake, uh, that my mom taught me to spin into something lovely, I want to talk about two things. One is Casserole Kitchen that happened this past Tuesday in the name of Trinity Presbyterian Church and our sister church, Josie Creek, and soon to be an additional church. Um, who I want to honor is uh, a couple of people. One is um, Nancy and Joe Ray who brought in chicken and there were 30 pieces of spicy that weren't ordered and it wasn't a mistake. We weigh that that was supposed to happen. Uh, the second thing is that we weigh Susie Lowry's intentional creation of a partnership for Trinity that is beautiful and feeds people every single month. I want a big old round of applause for Susie Lowry right now. Uh, so that's number one. Um, number two is that um, Bill and Helen Sue Parrish are with us digitally today. Um, they have been with us every Sunday since their departure, which was only two Sundays, but I intend for them to be with us forever because I don't do separation. So they are a part of my heart forever, and I went to their house yesterday morning for their sale, and um, such an honor to be in that place of holy cleanliness that spoke to this community, excellence. If you knew Helen Sue and Bill Parrish, you knew excellence. So I want to say kudos to Trinity for just being so cool. Astronomy. <laughs> Trinity is also a Lighthouse partner at the King Center, so I like to give you a little update on that from time to time. Lighthouse partners give $1,000 for five years. I think we're entering our fourth year, and that's how uh, the King Center runs. So there are partners all over town, and Trinity is one. And we're starting a new thing at the King Center this fall, health uh, accountability groups. So this is a big movement out of the Cleveland Clinic. And it turns out that people are very much more influential than doctors <laughs> on lifestyle and health changes. And so we're looking for uh, one more partner. And I'm going to talk maybe with the church about becoming a third satellite for that. But um, it, really, we weigh health. So. It's not so much about the number of pounds, but are we healthy and are we doing the behaviors that, that we need in our lives to maintain health? Um, Americans, we're not. So that's okay. We can improve, and we can do that in, in community very well. So thank you for your support of the King Center, and hopefully we will embrace that, that option at Trinity as well. Thanks. I have put the book donation box back out in the fellowship hall for the little free libraries around town. So if you have any books that, uh, if you're not like me, in other words, that read them and keep them and keep them and keep them, if you just read and then put them aside, bring them here and someone else can read them. Thank you.
August the 14th, we will have a pancake supper uh, that Tom will help prepare, and we're looking forward to that at 5.30 in the afternoon. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a drum circle right here. Uh, no previous experience necessary. We invite all of you to come. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you work off a lot of uh, frustrations, and you get to have a real sense of community. But uh, Robert Dom is going to come back and lead our drum circle at 6, and it'll be a, a, a kind of a way to kick off the fall semester uh, because the next Sunday is when we start Sunday school again. Very good. Thank you. Please rise in body or in spirit for our charge and benediction. Friends, this week, ask yourselves and ask each other, what are the clothes that we wear? How do we wear the clothes of Christ well and with meaning and with pride? Now, may we be raised with Christ into the things that are above May we strip off our old selves and clothe ourselves in new self that is renewed in the image of its creator. And may we find our home in the community of the Holy Spirit where there is no longer a Jew or Gentile, religious and non-religious, conservative and liberal and rich and poor, but where Christ is all and in all. Amen.